I wanted to show a family scene, a scene of Max, his family in the evening. His mother had a sewing shop during the day. She took orders. At night, she made the clothes. His father was a diamond cutter. In the evening, he would bring Max and his brother to the shop, and they all spent the time together. They were usually there until 11, 12 o'clock at night. Max recalls his parents working very hard, and he wasn't crazy about sitting in the floor cutting threads for his mom, but it, it leaves him with happy memories of the family, a time that was good before they were forced to leave their home. This is before, before the war, before 1940, when the family was united and uh, life was decent, you know. Uh, we would go to school and during the day uh, we were busy with our own activities while our parents would be working. In the evenings we would spend time in the back of the store until we would go home. We did not live in the store. We, we lived in a separate apartment. We were just all talking and I continued shooting and Max sat down and was telling us a little bit about the star. Um, it was actually framed and we took it out of the glass. I said, okay Max, let's just shoot one more and I brought the photograph back in and sat it on the table and um, I, I don't know, I just wanted to show that part of his life and that, you know, life does go on and things happen and um, that, that make you very happy years later and, you know, his marriage being one of those. This picture is to depict the uh, Jewish style of David that the occupying force and the German forces uh, uh, forced the Jewish people to wear in the occupied zones. Uh, the style of David in, in, in French, you have the word Jew. Uh, this is a Jewish star that was given to me. Uh, I never, I personally never wore one for the simple reason that uh, the Jewish agency that helped us uh, gave us false IDs and we were being passed as Christians. Therefore, uh, we did not wear that, although uh, this was worn by a Jewish kid that was with me in the home who later on gave it to me. This painting is of Henry Eisman. It's called Desperation. Henry told me there were three constants in his life during this Holocaust experience. He was always cold, he was always terrified, and he was always hungry. This hunger drove him to risk his life one evening. Henry and a buddy dug a hole under the inner fence to reach railroad cars. And they found a railroad car that was open in the top. It was full of produce. This was not for the prisoners, but this was for the guards. He and his buddy climb into the top of that railroad car and they see produce, they see cabbage, they see radishes, potatoes. They weren't going to eat the food, but they were going to take the food and trade it for bread because they had been in the camp several years now and, and they knew they could not digest the produce. About that time, they hear a guard dog approaching. It's, it's barking, the dog has broken away from the guard, and it's approaching rapidly. Henry tells his buddy to jump out, save yourself. I don't think I can run fast enough. The buddy leaves, Henry stays behind, and Henry's frantically looking for something to, to throw at the dog. The dog has come, is lunging up on the railroad car, and the guard's fast approaching. Henry says he picks up the biggest thing he saw, which was a head of cabbage, and he throws it at the dog. He hits the dog and stuns the dog, and Henry's able to jump out and run away. And I thought that was just something that we could all think about, even as, as a teenager in the camps, what hunger what would hunger lead us to do? The extra food for, for Henry that night did not save his life, but the cabbage head did. The stories of the Jews being transported in the cattle cars um, are just some of the most horrific stories that we heard. The, the I won't say living conditions because they weren't, weren't really geared for living. It was so unsanitary, so hot, so close, so crowded, 
um, no food and, and traveling for days and when you couldn't even really sit down or move because there was just no room. But um, Henry asked some of the others told us these stories and so it seemed a, just a really um, great opportunity to teach students about train transports and the boxcars and, and, and how the prisoners were moved from one location to another. The gentleman went to get a broom to come back and sweep it out and, and Henry who was looking inside said please don't sweep because they were so nasty and dirty that this is really uh, actually looks pretty good compared to what we were transported in.